Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie commentating for The Media Speaks. I always say reporting, and I've taken a good hard look at some of my comments and realized I am actually a political commentator, so that, that should make everyone happy. Friends, I want to get to a comment that I got on a uh, in an InfoWars comment line before we get into the news, because it was uh, talking about the number of food stamps given out. And we're about to get into some news here about the middle class being utterly destroyed by the policies of this president. Um, What's My Name 2 has an excellent, excellent uh, insight here that I wanted to share with everyone. Again, I found it in the comment line of uh, one of the stories about food stamps and how uh, we're over 49 million people on food stamps for like, what, 36 months in a row? It's, it's unheard of. Well, listen to this. If corporations are allowed to continually underpay workers, this is the result. If corporations are allowed to do all their manufacturing and technical work overseas, this is the result. What are people supposed to do here? You can't get a job, you can't keep a job, or you can't get paid enough. Funny that you still need to eat and get food for your family. And I'm not saying I'm in favor of the socialist answer to the problem. I'm saying that the problem would not be anywhere near what it is if not for the policies of Obama. And I must say, uh, excellent quote there. Um, listen to this. How the middle class has fragmented under Obama. This is finance.yahoo.com. When President Obama delivered his first State of the Union address in 2009, it says 53% of Americans considered themselves a middle class. Six years later, just 44% of Americans define themselves that way. That's almost 10% for you Kesha fans. It's no secret working Americans have been under duress for more than a decade as wages stagnate, computers and robots displace human workers, I think some of that has to happen, and wealth becomes concentrated among an alarmingly small portion of the population. Uh, we've pointed out on here that it's like uh, point one. Obama has promoted policies meant to help the middle class throughout his six years in office, yet the problem today is quite different than when he started the job in 2009, and it's not clear that Obama fully grasps the change. The president's latest proposal to aid the middle class is a Robin Hood tax plan that would hike the taxes on the wealthy to finance tax cuts for lower earners. Transferring money from the rich to the working class through the tax code has been a reoccurring theme of Obama's and many Democrats' tax proposals. And his latest plan seems no more likely to pass a Republican-controlled controlled Congress than many of his other ideas that have started in the State of the Union address, then quietly retired. It goes on that the middle class, however, has changed notably during the relatively short time that Obama has been in office, as the chart below shows. The portion of Americans who consider themselves middle class has dropped as the portion considering themselves upper class while the ranks who call themselves lower class have swelled. Americans are less optimistic than they used to be with the Harris Alienation Index, which measures a satisfaction with five different elements of public life. At the worst level is the poll's 39-year history. The government's approval ratings remain close to low records, and a startling majority of Americans feel that the nation is headed in the wrong direction. Um, I would say so. I, I would say that there's a reason for that. And it, what, what is what is middle class living? What is the American dream for the middle class? All right, let's see here. Owning a home. I do not. The home ownership rate has historically been around 64%, but it peaked at 69% during the housing boom and drifted back to about 67% by the time that Obama took office in 09. It has since fallen further to around 64%. Um... I'm probably going to get a house only because, unfortunately, my parents died. That's the only way you can get a house if you're a normal person in this country. Um, owning a car, that I do. Auto sales have been strong, suggesting this important element of middle class living remains intact. College education for the kids. I don't have any, but if I did, I, there's no way I would have any at all. Probably not. Big problem. A college degree is more important than ever. Um... That can be questioned. I have a degree. I went there. I did it. I put a big smile on my parents' face. But what has it done? I mean, I have a degree in IMT. 
I'm a graphics wizard. I know music production. I learned everything. I'm going to bore you to tears. Everything you're supposed to learn when you go to school. There aren't any of these jobs in the country, so I DJ in an adult club. College being more important than ever, that's uh, some Yahoo finagery there, but we'll let it go. It says the cost of college has been rising by nearly three times the rate of inflation since 2009. No wonder the amount of student debt has soared by 58% during that time to a staggering $1.3 trillion. And they lie. I mean, I'm dealing with a student loan nightmare. I went through a divorce and moved. And they weren't able to find me, to bill me properly. And you know when you're going through a divorce, you don't remember to dot all your I's and cross your T's and whatnot. So I had neglected to send it to them. Well, they sure could find me once it was in default. Bam, they found me right away. Why couldn't they find me prior? They do these things deliberately. They are predatory lenders is what they are. Um, health security. Um, I have used to have health insurance. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, I do not have health insurance. So no, that would be a no. It says the scoreboard is mixed. I don't think so. The Affordable Care Act has helped several million people who didn't previously have insurance get it. At the same time, deductibles and out-of-pocket costs have shot up during the last several years, adding to the health care burden for many middle-class people who otherwise have stable coverage. Friends, I'm completely self-sufficient. I'm on no uh, government assistance at all, thank God. Um, if I ever needed it, would I take it? Yeah, I pay into it. You bet I would. Is there a better system? Yes, there is, but I'm trapped in the one that there is. But no, I, I have personally no assistance of any kind. Um, my issue is that I had insurance, excellent insurance. I have uh, my high def people will see it. I'd cut the tip of my finger off on a broken fish aquarium once, had it sewed back on in the emergency room. Uh, didn't affect keyboard playing, thankfully. And I had the insurance. I could afford the insurance for that you know, not terribly expensive, but somewhat expensive debacle, and I was able to pay for it. Now, thanks to Obamacare, I don't have any insurance at all, and I can't afford to get any insurance at all. Leave comments. I'm not getting enough comments. Leave comments. How many of you are in this same boat? How many of you had insurance until Obamacare took it away from you? Retirement security. No, not really. I have a couple... Uh, uh, no. <laughs> the twin stock market and the housing busts that greeted Obama in 09 trashed retirement planning for millions. That has improved somewhat during the last several years, yet more than half of retirement age households face serious financial risk. Thankfully, I'm way too young for that right now. Obviously, um, looking ahead, I'm not doing so great. But uh, again, you're, you're, unfortunately, your parents die, so I may be buying and renting houses. So that's probably going to be my security. So there's a big uh, question mark for that one. How's that? Occasional family vacations. That I can do. Americans take less vacations now than at any time on record. Some employees suffer from work martyr complex, according to one study, leading them to take less time off than their employers allow. Many low-income workers, meanwhile, don't get paid any time off at all. If, you are, if we were a prosperous nation, it is not evident by the way we spend our free time. I'm only able to do it because of the work schedule. I actually don't get paid. I have to save for them out of my own money, and I don't get any paid vacations at all. And I've been there like seven or eight years. So I would be half on that one. So wh where do you guys score on the uh, middle class destruction scale? Let me know in the comment line. All right, friends, millions to owe Obamacare tax penalty. This is from money.cnn.com. This goes for Christelle, dedicated to her, because she was under the impression that she somehow was going to use a magical ring, and we'll get to that later. She was going to use a magical ring or something, and she was not going to have to in the least bit worry about any of these fines. They were, they were all going to go around her. Not really, but basically she did, put it off, put it off, put it off. My insurance was canceled, and I was telling her that this was coming, and I think a lot of Americans are not understanding just how nasty it's really going to be. So I'm going to cover it for you. Were you uninsured in 2014? It's time to pay the piper. Well, see, I wonder how that's going to work for me, because I was insured through part of it, then Obamacare ruined it, and Ohio canceled it. So I was technically insured. I might be okay here. Some 3 million to 6 million Americans will have to pay an Obamacare tax penalty for not having health insurance last year. No, that is for not being able to afford health insurance last year, tre Treasury officials said on Wednesday. 
It's the first time they have given estimates on how many people will be subject to a fine. The penalty, Christelle, is $95 or 1% of your income above a certain threshold. Roughly $20,000 for a couple. That means if you only make ten grand a year. So you could end up owing the IRS a lot of money. Take a married couple with a $100,000 income. Their bills come to $797, according to the Tax Policy Center ACA Penalty Calculator. The penalty for remaining uninsured rises to a larger of 325 or 2% of income in 2015. As millions of Americans, it says, sit down in the coming weeks to com compile their tax returns, they'll have to contend with Obamacare's health insurance mandate for the first time. Mandate something that you cannot afford. How does this happen? You let it happen with car insurance. I was one of the only people at a very young age complaining that the government has no right to tell you that you have to buy insurance. If you want to be safe, it is up to you to buy your own damn car insurance and you can decide how much you want to pay if somebody runs into you. It's not somebody else's job to get insurance for you. Everyone let it happen and now look. Some three quarters of the nation's 150 million taxpayers have health insurance through their jobs or government programs and will simply have to check a box on the Form 1040. I bet a lot of people are going to lie about that. I'm not saying you should. Another 15 million to 30 million people will request and be granted an exemption to the mandate by filing Form 8965. Those who aren't subject to the insurance requirement include undocumented immigrants always. Low-income Americans, uh, yeah, right, and for whom insurance premiums were more than 8% of their household income. How many of you can afford to lose 8% of your household income? <laughs> Finally, between 4.5 million and 7.5 million taxpayers received subsidies for insurance premiums when they signed up for coverage on the Obamacare exchanges. They will have to use Form 8962 to reconcile their actual 2014 income with the amount they estimated when they applied for the policy in late 13, early 14. Those who underestimated their income are, of course, going to get reamed as well. It's, it's burden after burden after burden after burden. So, friends, there are the facts concerning it. That is the wonderful Obamacare, who has made insurance too expensive for you, has taken your insurance away made it so that you could not afford insurance and then find you for not being able to afford it. People in other countries right now, leave a comment. You, are you probably so utterly confused that our country is really running this badly? New cyberbullying law will force Illinois students to give up social media passwords. This is from Mikhail Thalen of InfoWars. Nothing like instilling the importance of the Fourth Amendment into the moldable minds of the youth. Students suspected of cyberbullying could face criminal charges under a new Illinois state law if they refuse to reveal their social media passwords to school administrators. Now, this must be because they don't know how to do a screen. In Illinois... I, this is breaking on the correct views. Breaking news. Are you ready? Are you ready? Breaking news. Illinois computers. Illinois. I know Illinois. Illinois computers do not have the ability to take screenshots. That's right. You, if, if you, if one child cusses at another child and calls him everything but a brass monkey, there is no way in Illinois for child B. Brass Monkey, there's no way for Brass Monkey to take a screenshot in Illinois. Instead, what they must find Child A, get his password. Which, of course, doesn't prove that he did it anyway. He's just going to say that he didn't. He this was hacked into, and you won't be able to prove it without a very expensive court case anyway. But rather than just take a picture of the damn screenshot if someone is cyberbullying another child, they're doing it the other way, where the person who is accused of saying something has to give their password over and let somebody else rummage through all of their messages. To hell with that! I'm sorry. Where it, when every youth generation, not just my generation, 
Every youth generation, all the way back to whenever, has always been full of rebellion and piss and vinegar and... Urgh, what is this complacent, mamby pamby apathy that is so common? I mean, young people are supposed to be driving down the road flipping the bird at police officers, not giving their password to the nanny state. According to the new... Young people act like old people that I hate. According to the new rule, all forms of digital harassment, whether done on or off campus, will now be investigated as a violation of school disciplinary rules and procedures in a school that doesn't know how to do a screenshot. Parents and students in several districts were informed of the new policy, which began at the start of the year after receiving letters from school officials earlier this month. If I had a kid and you demanded his password, you would remember that I visited your school. You would have a very angry person on your hands. One such, one such letter, excuse me, obtained at my motherboard states that administrators may demand passwords from any student deemed to have evidence relating to the suspect, suspected cyberbullying. If your child has an account on a social networking website, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Ask.fm, etc., please be aware that state law requires school authorities to notify you that your child may be asked. I thought it said demanded. It said demanded asked to provide his or her passwords for these accounts to school officials in certain instances. A letter to parents in the Triad Community Unit School District states, if any kids there have any kahunas, look up the Mike Rutherford Institute and tell them you are going to refuse to give this school your password. School authorities may require a student or his or her parent guardian to provide a password or other related account information in order to gain access to his or her account or profile. On a social networking website, if school authorities have reasonable cause to believe that a student's account on a social networking website contains evidence that the student has violated the school disciplinary rule. To hell with that! You are out of your mind! Um, this is Triad District Superintendent Lay Lewis. Um, refusal from students or even parents could lead to criminal charges. Bring it! I swear to God, if the people of Illinois capitulate to this, it really makes me wonder if students have any idea how they're being railroaded, if they even know that there is a Fourth Amendment, and if so, what it might be. Second of all, if parents allow this to be done to their children, then I'm telling you, you have a pumpkin for a head. Uh, Foxnews.com, new DNA technique may reveal face of killer in unsolved double murder. I think as long as you could prove that you did it, there are a lot of times that this could be very, very helpful in solving some of the more tragic murders and homicides that are sometimes done throughout the world. Listen to this. There were no witnesses to the gruesome murder of a South Carolina mother and her three-year-old daughter inside a busy apartment complex four years ago. But the new technology that can create an image of someone using DNA samples left at crime scenes might bring police closer to catching the killer. This is excellent news. You would find out what he looked like and then match his DNA to make sure it's not just mistaken identity. Uh, I'm happy that these technologies are being used for something other than designer babies. Anybody hear me? Reston, Virginia-based Paraben Nanolabs, uh, with funding from the Department of Defense, that worries me, has debuted a breakthrough type of analysis called DNA phenotyping, which the company says can predict a person's physical appearance from the tiniest DNA samples, like a speck of blood or a strand of hair, every little speck. The DNA phenotyping service, commercially known as Snapshot, or that's not confusing at all, could put a face on millions of unsolved cases, including international ones, and generate investigative leads when the trail has gone cold. This is particularly useful when there are no witnesses, no hints in the DNA database, and nothing to go on, Dr. Ellen Ray Greatuck, Paraben's Director of Bioformatics, told to foxnews.com. Traditional forensic analysis treats DNA as a fingerprint, whereas snapshot treats it as a blueprint, a genetic description of a person from which physical appearance can be inferred. It says, uh, the new technology reads the parts of the human genome that code for the differences in physical appearance between people. Snapshot is able to predict such critical traits as skin color, hair color, eye color, and face shape. 
It can also predict the individual's ancestry as well as highly detailed traits like freckles. Obviously, this is, uh, has the potential to be th seriously abused, but at the same time, it has the ability to um, be another deterrent against people who are um, prone to these act kind of acts of violence. If you know that not just your DNA, maybe you've never done anything wrong before, so you know that your DNA is not in some database somewhere, therefore you're probably going to pull it off even if they get your DNA because they don't have anyone to match it to. This would eliminate that, and the more intelligent criminals, which oftentimes are the most dangerous in terms of how many people they hurt, this sort of thing could be useful there. Um, as for ways it could go badly, we probably already agree. Comment out. Friends, I'm going to ask you to look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can uh, find some of the best writing that you've ever come across by looking up his work. And uh, you can find him on Facebook.com. And when you do, you're going to want to obviously not be on Facebook any more than you have to. But uh, it's worth it to look him up. He is an amazing writer. And when you get there, let him know that you want to read some of his vampire stories. Let him know that you want to read some of his poetry if you're given to the other side of the art spectrum. And let him know that you heard about it on the correct views. Friends, I got... Uh, four more stories to get to. Long show today. Um, this is brought to you by Change Transportation in Canton, Ohio. If you are within a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, I would call tra Change Transportation. Let Kenny know you heard about it from uh, the correct views, and he will price match it uh, with other transportation and cab companies. Anthony Gucci, already PrisonPlanet.com. McDonald's sales rapidly decline as Americans reject fake food. Can anyone listening to this, if you do this, I promise I will promote your favorite charity on here, just like I did Mike McLaughlin, for the next uh, month. Can you get this video snippet to McDonald's? Because it's real simple to fix your problem, McDonald's. McDonald's, offer the regular menu that you always have for the same prices that you've always offered them for. Add all organic food that doesn't share anything other than maybe the grease. All organic food to the menu. And when people drive through, if they don't want to spend more for the organic burger, then they can order the regular. If they do, you have just damn near cornered the market to some degree on uh, non-GMO foods organic foods in fast food restaurants. It's that easy. It's that easy. But no, they're changing CEOs and everything. I think Ronald McDonald is running the company. I really do. For them to not see how incredibly easy this would be to fix. The impossible is happening. McDonald's is quickly driving out of its stable stock position and into a world of financial hurt as citizens of the United States and elsewhere, elsewhere have decided that they are completely done with the company's Franken foods. The decision has hit McDonald's so hard that its own CEO has even stepped down, following the news of continued decline in the company's most recent briefing. The world's largest restaurant chain is frantically replacing its foundation in an attempt to recover from removing its CFO and CEO to launching new trendy advertising campaigns like the one that they premiered at the Super Bowl. So rather than spend the millions of dollars to buy organic burgers and let the people decide if they wish to eat them alongside the regular poison that you have, your idea is to change your CEO and spend millions of dollars on Super Bowl ads. People dumb enough to do that. All the new financial and marketing moves in the world, though, cannot change the fact that many people simply will never eat at McDonald's again thanks to their GMO-laden food ingredients, which have been extensively documented by both health organizations and mainstream media alike. Again, if you don't care, then you would order the same thing you always ordered. With many items containing over 19 different ingredients, which are virtually impossible to pronounce, and are also used in the production of silly putty and yoga mats, that's what's in McDonald's food, it's no wonder that consumers are saying no thanks to Ronald McDonald. 
And they got a chemical in here that's a silicon used for breast plants, breast implants, silly putty, and chicken nuggets. There's a laxative in here that e-cigarette companies are even phasing out. And, of course, the yoga mat foam. We already covered that. It said, so let's be clear. It would be one thing if McDonald's offered a variety of items that didn't contain these problematic substances. I love Anthony Gucciardi. Yes, I did say it first. He didn't steal it from me. Great minds think alike. I've been saying it. You can look up my videos for a year now. It would be one thing if they, following the outspoken warnings of experts and health groups around the globe, actually removed them and sourced non-GMO alternatives for their food products and added real food instead. Again, I think that would be too expensive to go all organic for McDonald's. That would not be the way to go. They should do both. It says, or if they spoke out and made sure not to financially support the factory chicken farms that whistleblowers have revealed, there's a link here, the chicken farmers where they get their chickens. They revolve around not allowing the chickens to ever breathe fresh air and forcing them to sit upon generations of feces and blood. Maybe they should stop doing that. So, I mean, there you go. McDonald's, uh, really easy fix. They're making it real complicated, and they're probably going to do worse and worse and worse. Paul Joseph Watson, Watson PJ Dub, wrote this. FBI official, we need to keep fear alive to justify the terror budget. He didn't say... We need, maybe this is what he's going to claim he meant. I'm giving him an out here, unfortunately. I hope he doesn't listen. Um, they didn't say they need to keep you abreast of what's going on so that you will understand what they are doing. They said that it's important that they keep fear alive. Listen to this. Appearing in a documentary about how the FBI entraps and provocateurs terror suspects, Former FBI Assistant Director Thomas Fuentes admits that the federal agency needs to keep fear alive in order to justify budget increases. The documentary entitled The Newborough Sting tells the story of how the feds convinced four poverty-stricken New York men to become involved in an informant terror plot. After defending the FBI's role in manufacturing the plot, Fuentes brazenly admits that the agency deliberately works to bolster terrorism fears in order to obtain increased funding. Listen. Yes, you heard him say it. After defending the FBI's role in manufacturing the plot, Fuentes, as you said, as you heard, I should say, brazenly admits that the agency deliberately works to bolster terrorism fears in order to get increased funding. Um, and two more stories left. Don't be afraid. Fear is the mind killer. This is just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, this is from Newsmax.com. The story itself is uh, Saudi Arabia King Abdullah. Uh, P Patrick Leahy is asking K King Abdullah not to flog this uh, poor journalist uh, blogger that they didn't like what he said, so they're beating him unmercifully. Um, 20 weekly sets of public whippings. They're all they're, The guy's going to leave this crippled if they beat him like this. And uh, all he did, all, uh, 1,000 lashes is what they're going to give him uh, over 20 weeks. That's, that'll cripple a person. If you don't believe me, look it up. It's not like a little whip. He already has received 50 lashes. And it's all because he's a blogger who spoke his mind. He didn't even threaten anybody. But the dumdy, there's two dumdies today. The dumdy of the day, I don't know how in the hell she said this with a straight face. But listen to this. Leahy first. I urge the Saudi government to release Mr. Abu al khair and Mr. Badawi and dismiss the spurious charges against him. This kind of repression and barbarity have no place in the 21st century, Leahy said. And I agree. The State Department appeared to send mixed signals over Badawi's punishment. Spokeswoman Jen Psaki called the sentence inhumane, but another spokeswoman, Mary Harf, said there is little that the Obama administration can do. I don't think we're in the business of demanding things. 
Not in the business of demanding things. The Obama administration is the most demanding administration in American history. Demanding off of Russia. Demanding off of Iran. Demanding off of Afghanistan. Demanding off its own people to buy insurance they can't afford. How did that bonehead ever say that with a straight face? Here's the other dumb the other day. This is uh, Christelle's magic ring that will protect her from not having to pay Obama fines. NYDailyNews.com, Texas boy suspended for saying that he could make a classmate disappear 